Of Speaking of actors, super talented guy. We're going to bring him in. Jonathan Kite, Skokie native. You know him from Two Broke Girls, and now he's got a new show out with Jamie Foxx, who happens to be on our show a little bit later today, and he's got a sweet mustache. What's up, Jonathan? And a robe. I believe that's a man <laughs> robe. This is uh, th this is how we're doing it in uh, in quarantine. I like well, it, Jonathan. Can you give the deets? It's the lumberjacks. It's the slumberjack, <laughs> is what I call it. Uh, it's uh, you know you can chop wood. You don't have to stop working, but if you want to take a nap mid shift, mid uh, axe swing, you are good. Yeah. Yep. Now it's... see, I know that you do impressions, and I would think that Matthew McConaughey would appreciate that. He he would. This is uh, definitely part of the McConaughey collection. Super deuce. <laughs> he gives it two whistles. <laughs> What would, I said that's my impression of Matthew McConaughey as a tea kettle. <laughs> yeah. What would um what would Barack Obama? I mean, I think Barack Obama would look really good in some kind of you know robe thing like what you've got on. Well, uh, let me be clear. Uh, blue is my color. Yeah. And uh, I like the. It's sort of uh, an elevated, uh, dressier, snuggy. <laughs> and I get them for everybody. Uh, Joey B's got one. Uh, Sasha, and Leah, Michelle. Yeah. We have a whole set. Yeah, Joe Biden might. You, did you give Joe Biden one, Barack? Uh, of course. Uh, you know, actually, uh, Joe Biden gave me this one. Oh, I uh, see. Yeah, this is uh, the, the Biden uh, specialty. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, Uncle, uh, Uncle Joe is how he's known uh, around the White House. <laughs> All right. Well, I know some other characters are going to be jumping into host chat list, diving into some topics. I do not think that we needed a study for this first one. Okay. Turns out it's what everybody already knows. Monday, the least favorite day of the week. I was surprised by the percentage. Only 38% of people said Monday. The, but the second highest answer was 8% for Tuesday. But you would think that would be like 90% for Monday. Nobody likes a Monday, right? I actually am happy to be back at work today. <laughs> well, that'll, that'll end by tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I did. I said it before you came in. I was talking to Ro. Like, I like, like having a week off, but I love being back here. Like, I feel like more like I'm in, like, this is what I'm supposed to be doing every day. Like, this is part of my structure. It's part of my thing. It's part of my groove, and it gives me energy. Very nice. Do you have a least favorite day of the week? Wednesdays. Why? Because you're in the middle. <laughs> you're in the middle? <laughs> and you're not close enough to Friday. But yeah. like, you can see it, but it's like, oh, I still got two more days. All right. Uh, Ro, what about you? Uh, I think probably uh, Tuesday. Because it's further, it's Monday, I, I agree with Val to getting back. Tuesday, there's there's a little bit of a, I don't know, a hangover. There's not as much going on on a Tuesday. I like Wednesday. Thursday is my favorite day of the week, though, because there's the anticipation yes. of Friday and the weekend. I agree. And you're thinking, like, oh, this is so exciting. And then when the weekend is a disappointment, Monday really sucks. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, you get the Sunday scaries, too. A lot of people don't like Sunday nights because you're thinking about everything you got to do for the week, and you're kind of thinking about it, planning it out. Jonathan, what about you? I think Tuesday... Is, is not that it's never good, but it's like at least Monday gets to be a part of a three-day weekend. So sometimes it gets to live, but Tuesday never does. And you're so far from the weekend. Mm. That, that's actually a very good point, because we do have quite a few three-day weekends. Right. Yeah. Think about it. How would Tom Hanks give a Monday motivation speech? <laughs> Come on, guys! You gotta get up. Okay, first of all, you gotta get coffee. I've already had 10 cups, okay? I have 10 cups. Right away, I make them. I got them right over there. They're fantastic. And then I go for a five-mile jog, and I just start the day. <laughs> That's it. I feel like I heard a little Denzel. And there, did I or no? Cool. Never, you know, I don't do Denzel, but maybe I do and just don't know it. Yeah, no, no, I think you should try to start working on Denzel because there was something that you said in that Hank, uh, uh, um, Tom, Hanks. Tom Hanks monologue there that reminded me of Denzel. Mm. I like Ooh. that, though. Mm -hmm. King Kong ain't got nothing on me. <laughs> <laughs> me either. King Kong ain't got nothing on me. <laughs> All right, next topic. I don't know if you've already experienced this. I have Uber launching a new rider verification program to try to make things safer, not only here in Chicago, because we know our carjacking situation is just out of control, but across the country. So have you, have you oh, you don't ride Uber, mm -hmm. but you have to put in a pin. A lot of times you're getting a pin now when you open the door, instead of saying, oh, such and such is the car for such and such, you have to put in your pin. But also for people that are using prepaid debit cards or Venmo, you have to actually put 
in an ID into your profile, a state ID, a license, or a passport. And Ro, I know that uh, you've been working on this with the police department. Is this, do you think this is really going to help? Uh, yeah, absolutely, because Illinois actually has one of these really kind of backwards laws about not allowing the Uber drivers to see the identity of the of the person who's ordered from them. Other states require them to actually use the photo that you take for, whether it's Lyft or Uber or whatever it is, for your profile pic so that the driver is able to see that. Illinois does not require that. This is a workaround to make sure that, that the drivers are safe, because drivers actually do represent the, the ride share industry represents a kind of an unhealthy percentage of carjackings throughout the entire nation. Right, you see we're up like 135 percent in a year. It's pretty scary. It is super on, scary. On a lighter note, if Seth Rogen was an Uber driver, how would he do? Uh, I, uh, I gotta be honest with you. Uh, I, I, I'm not sure who I'm supposed to pick up. I, uh, uh, right now, I thought I saw a picture of a koala. Which that would be amazing, but I'm like, how would a koala get a credit card? And then I was like, listen, koalas, they, they, they do a lot, you know, so I guess I'm picking up a koala. <laughs> That's it. All right. Are you working on any new impressions, Jonathan? Uh, Chris Hemsworth. All right, let's hear that. All right, Chris Hemsworth. Uh, very nice. I'm uh, very happy to be here on Windy City Live. I've uh, actually just come from the gym, and you can't see it right now because... My legs are out of frame, but I'm actually doing squats as we speak. <laughs> there you go, the Hemsworth brothers, man. Yeah. They made a deal with the devil, those guys. <laughs> yeah, all right. Sure. The gorgeous I'll... devil. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Jonathan, uh, we have Jamie Foxx coming up in just a bit on the show. I know the two of you are great friends, and you guys are working together on a new series. Tell us about it. It's called uh, Dad, Stop Embarrassing Me. It comes out this Wednesday, August 14th on Netflix, and it is based on... Um, Jamie's real life relationship with his um, eldest daughter Corinne, and it's their stories. Um, obviously, there's a, you know there's artistic liberties that are taken and whatnot, but um, it's based on just the hilarious, um, incredible relationship that the two of them have together, and it's it was just unbelievable. We filmed it um, in uh, August through November of last year, and it was just an incredible, uh, incredible time overall. Wow. Yeah, and Jonathan's very funny in it. I've already seen a little bit of the preview because I get a chance to talk to Jamie Foxx coming up in a little bit, but you, he definitely uh, brings the funny and represents Chicago land just right. Thank you. Yeah, it was great. I mean, David Allen Greer's on it. You Everybody's know. on it, I feel like. It, it is so much fun. And, you know, I think it, and today we all just need to laugh, right? You know, we could use a good laugh in our life and um, I think that uh, this show really delivers, and it was so fun to shoot. There's such a chemistry between all of us because we're really friends in real life, and we've had a, a long-standing relationship, each of us sort of differently. Portia Coleman, who plays um, Jamie's sister on the show, I've known for many years. You know, she's known Jamie, so it just feels like a real family affair. Right. Now, didn't you audition for something for Jamie years ago, and you've always wanted to work together? I met him, that's how I started doing impressions, was because of Jamie Foxx. Oh, wow. So I did not do impressions, and he was doing a sketch show like 12 years ago, and it was, um, they, they, you know, when they auditioned me, they said, we'd love to have you do characters, but you have to be able to do a lot of impressions. And so I learned Vince Vaughn and Seth Rogen and stuff like that to audition for that show. I wound up getting it, and that's how Jamie and I became friends. Oh, wow. And Vince is one of my favorite impressions you do, so you got to give us a quick Vince here. Hey, uh, I like the energy right now. You know what I'm saying? Like the energy. I can feel you through the Zoom right now. Like not only right here, but I can feel you in the heart. You know what I mean? Like, 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 like E.T., how I flew on the bike. I'm going to get in there. I'm going to take off. Ah. <laughs>